Genealogy by Tim, Season 4, Episode 8, recorded August 24th, 2024. A whole lot of nothing. It's basically what I discovered this summer during my two trips, one to Lancaster and one to the Boston metropolitan area. A whole lot of nothing is basically what I found, but I sure had fun doing it. Details coming up on Genealogy by Tim. I traveled to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, during the week of August 1st for a three-day trip, primarily to search for the baptism records of my grandmother's grandmother, Cora Klein Harrison, her father, David H. Klein, and his mother, Catherine Hogentogler Klein. I wanted these baptism records primarily to include them in my application for the First Families Lineage Society of the Genealogical Society of Pennsylvania. I went to the Lancaster County Historical Society, also known as Lancaster History, lancasterhistory.org, and searched various church records, both in physical form and on microfilm, and in all three cases I came up empty-handed. So the First Family's application will have to proceed without those records. The information is pretty well known. It's documented in other sources, notably David H. Klein's Civil War Pension Records and the book, Historical Annals of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, published in 1903. While these aren't primary sources, I believe they're sufficient to demonstrate relationships across generations. And hopefully they'll be accepted by the Genealogical Society when I submit my application to the First Families Lineage Society, hopefully by the end of the year, perhaps early next year. As always, I'll keep you updated on that. But I did have some secondary goals in Lancaster in the event that my primary goal did not bear fruit. First, I visited the Soldiers Memorial Park, also known as Six Ward Park, to see the monument recently erected in 2022 to honor 14 fallen soldiers who died in World War I, among them David Klein Donnelly, who was a nephew of Cora Klein Harrison. He died of illness during World War I, and I devoted this season's Memorial Day episode to him. That would be Season 4, Episode 5, Memorial Day Spotlight on David Klein Donnelly. Go ahead and check that out for details of his life and service. But I did visit the Six Ward Park and I took some memorable photos of the new monument. It's not too big, about knee high, maybe a little, or waist high, and is in the shape of a gravestone, so I just use my ordinary gravestone photography techniques to capture that image, and it will be going up on my website pretty soon, in addition to visiting the memorial at the Six Ward Park. I made it a goal to photograph as many Hable gravestones as I could. I did a spotlight on Earl and Esther Hable for the 10th episode of Season 3, Spotlight on Earl and Esther Hable. Earl Hable is a grandson of David H. Klein, the son of John P. Hable and Carrie Klein Hable, Carrie Klein Hable being a daughter of David H. Klein. He was the one who lost both of his arms in a electrician's accident, let's say, while working at the Pennsylvania Power and Light Company, known at the time as the Edison Power Company. He had four children, one of whom, a son, Earl H. Hable Jr., was also killed in action. He died in World War II in 1945, and I was able to photograph his gravestone at the Riverview Burial Park in Lancaster. Earl Jr. had a sister, Helen C. Hable, who married a James W. Hollinger, and they are buried very close together in the military section of the Riverview Burial Park. Lastly, I was able to photograph the gravestone of Robert C. Zam, Z-A-H-M, who died in 2012. 
He was the son of James Hollinger and Ellen Habel. And his gravestone is interesting to me because he took his wife's name. His wife may still be living. But that's an interesting choice. I don't see many men choosing to take the name of their wives in the Graham Manfleck family tree. So I made an effort to snap that photo for inclusion in the family tree. And of course, while in Lancaster, I made time to go to my favorite pub out in Columbia, Bullies on Union. Had myself a veggie burger there. It was delicious, and I can't wait to get back. But that was my trip to Lancaster this summer, during the week of August 1st. Empty-handed on the baptism records, but made a trip to Sixth Ward Park to honor World War I veterans, and I found the graves of some children and a grandchild of Earl and Esther Habel. During the third week in August, from August 15th to August 17th, I put the bike on an Amtrak train and rode up to Melrose, Massachusetts, which is 45 minutes north of Boston by bicycle, and stayed at an Airbnb, which was very close to the Holy Cross Cemetery in Malden, where I was hoping to photograph several Smith family gravestones. If you look all the way back in my podcast history to Season 1, Episode 3, Sorting Out the Smiths, and Season 1, Episode 4, More Sorting Out the Smiths, or The Elevator Incident, you will learn more about this family that I was trying to document at the Holy Cross Cemetery in Malden. Basically... My paternal grandmother's mother was Joanna C. Smith Harrison. Her father was William Smith, and William Smith's parents were a James Smith and a Maria Tierney. James and Maria had three children who survived infancy. One was named Bernard. He was the oldest. Then came William. After William was born, James, Maria, and Bernard came to America and settled in the Boston area leaving William behind, possibly with an aunt, a sister of Maria's. After James, Maria, and Bernard arrived in the Boston area, they had another child, a daughter, named Susan, and two other children, Ellen and Thomas, who did not survive infancy. Later on after that, William, my great-grandmother's father, came to America from Ireland. This is an Irish family. He settled in the Philadelphia area, Along with an aunt of his, he married an Elizabeth Harkins, an Irish woman living in Philadelphia, and they started the Philadelphia branch of the Smith family. But I took a trip to Boston this month to see if I could locate the graves of William Smith's parents, my direct ancestors, James Smith and Maria Tierney, and I was excited about this one because I believe it may be the last opportunity I will have to photograph the graves of direct ancestors on American soil. I think I got just about all of them, except for some way back distant colonial ancestors in Lancaster that I don't have much hope of locating. If I haven't found them in 10 years, I don't expect to. So I was hoping to get a very nice picture of the monument of James Smith and Maria Tierney. Also, the graves of their children, Bernard and his wife, Ellen, Susan and her husband, Thomas J. Barry, and whatever grandchildren of James and Maria that I happened to discover during my short stay there. And I'm a little disappointed to report that I found very few gravestones for these people. Let's do the rundown here. James Smith and Maria Tierney, the patriarch and matriarch of the Smiths in America. They are buried at Holy Cross Cemetery in Malden, and there is no gravestone for them. Bernard Smith and Ellen Agnes Barry Smith also buried at Holy Cross Cemetery in Malden, along with their son, Edward F. Smith, who died in a freak elevator accident in 1915. They're buried together in the same lot with no gravestone. The daughter of James Smith and Maria Tierney, Susan Agnes Smith Barry, is buried at Holy Cross Cemetery. She has no gravestone. Her husband, 
Thomas J. Barry, born in 1869, died in 1931. He is apparently buried in another cemetery, the Oak Grove Cemetery in Medford. He is buried in the same grave as his daughter, Josephine Cecilia Barry Wyatt, and her husband, John Edward Wyatt. His name is not inscribed on the gravestone, but the names of Josephine and John are inscribed on that monument. There is a gravestone there for them. And the two children who died in infancy, Ellen Smith died in 1875, and Thomas Smith died in 1876. Their graves were not located, and this is not due to lack of diligence. One of the record keepers at the Catholic Cemeteries Association of Boston took a lot of time to search the records for at least Ellen Smith and came up empty-handed. So between James Smith, Maria Tierney, their children and spouses, Bernard and Susan, and their infant children, no gravestones at all. We have to get down to James Smith's granddaughter, Josephine C. Barry Wyatt, before we find our first gravestone. That is for Josephine and John Wyatt. Heading back over to Bernard Smith and Ellen Barry, I was able to locate the gravestone of one of their daughters, Mary Ellen Smith, and her husband, Joseph Dobratz, at the Evergreen Cemetery, which is within the city of Boston. Their daughter, Mary Agnes Dobratz, is also buried at the location. And as I discovered, after I returned home from Boston, Joseph and Mary Ellen Dobratz had a son whom I believe is still alive. And he was a pilot for the United States Marine Corps who went on many adventures and has a glacier named after him in Antarctica. As I learn more about him, I will be sure to perhaps spotlight him on a future episode. But he seems to be a living hometown hero, Joseph Dobratz, son of Joseph and Mary Ellen Dobratz, whose grave I visited at Evergreen Cemetery in Boston. And one grave that I regret I wasn't able to visit, but almost certainly exists at the Oak Grove Cemetery, is that of William Robert Smith, his wife Ruth Tower Smith, and their son William B. Smith Jr. William B. Smith Jr. was killed in action in the Korean War in 1950. And the reason I wasn't able to visit that grave site is that I assumed wrongly that the Oak Grove Cemetery office would be open on Saturday. So I saved research in that cemetery for Saturday, and then when I looked them up online to find directions to that cemetery, I discovered that the office was closed. So I was not able during the trip to find the grave site of William Bartlett Smith Sr., his wife Ruth, and son William. I might have to ask my distant cousin Michael, who lives in the area, I believe, to find and photograph that one for me. But that was it. Those were the only gravestones I was able to find. The Wyatt gravestone, the Dobratz gravestone, and there was one more. Let me not forget this one. The Hinckley gravestone at Shawsheen Cemetery in Bedford. That one actually had to ride out an hour each way to photograph this gravestone. Not that it was entirely unique or special among gravestones. I'm sure the Hinckleys were fine people, but it was the only other gravestone I kind of had information on and had the opportunity to photograph. Mary Magdalene Barry was a daughter of Susan Agnes Smith and Thomas J. Barry, granddaughter of James Smith and Maria Tierney. She was born in 1890, died in 1964. Her husband was Edward Bartlett Hinckley. He was born in 1889 and died in 1969. They are buried in Shawshine Cemetery, which is a little bit out of the way, especially for bicycle. They are buried with a Florence L. and Robert F. Hinckley. And I was able to capture that gravestone as well. And that was it. That was it for gravestones anyway. 
before hopping back on the train, I did have a couple Sam Adamses, some Boston clam chowder, and a veggie burger at Cheers, the famous Cheers pub, also known as the Bull and Finch pub of 84 Beacon Street in Boston. I had a hearty dinner there, a couple beers, right before hopping on the Amtrak back to Philadelphia. <laughs> Those were my trips this summer. One to Lancaster, one to the Boston area. For the main purpose of each of these trips, I didn't quite find what I was looking for, but I didn't come home completely empty-handed. And I had some good food and good fun in each of these locations. Ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much wraps up the summer genealogy season. I have been in professional development for my teaching job this week. I see the students this coming Monday, August 26th. And as I enter what I discovered this summer into the family tree, I'm sure more stories will pop up here and there. And as they do, I will bring them to you. Until then, keep on digging. Your next family history adventure awaits. Mm -hmm.